starting off we're going to pick up from here last week you can see we painted the whole boat white and we're going to pick it up from there uh, and and continue working towards getting this bottom painted so we can flip it over and put it on the trailer so here we go coming to you live with a white one so you can see we put on those two two layers of uh the super build 302 i think it is from Alex alex seal so now what i'm going to do is i'm contemplating i'm gonna put a guide coat on but i know i have some issues that i got to address before i put the guide coat on so i'm gonna go through and just kind of circle those um you know some some things that are just evident you know like you know if you can see where this chine comes down well, that point should carry all the way down this is another one of those areas where i kind of screwed it up sanding so like this would be an area I know I need to address. You can see them pretty even like, you know, this this line that's going through here. There's a, you know, just a few little gouges and stuff that uh, I may go ahead and just fix before I get started with the uh, guide coat. I'm gonna see if I can find some more. You know, like this is just a little line. There's some little holes and stuff here. Um, it's all gonna, all going to come out you know there's a line right here another one of those with a didn't didn't put enough pressure on it you know right there on this edge there's just a lot of that little stuff like that and i'm gonna try and decide what to do with i hope you can see some of that through here like here's a little another line like right here you can see this line that's coming down through here and you know i'm not entirely happy with the way this chime lined up you know how much time i spent on them by and large they all came out pretty good but there's uh you know then you got these little pieces like this which is just uh it's like a little that may be a mosquito or that may be a piece of lint that come off the brush but like down here and i don't know i'm gonna fix this just in case but I, you know, don't know how much of this is going to come down and then the rub rail and everything else. But uh, I'm going to probably go ahead and fix that just in case. So coming around to the transom, I think I've talked about this before. You can see, you know, once again, this is the size of my finger. That's pretty evident there. Uh, and this is, I put a piece of, I put a strip of fairing compound in here. And, all right, so I'm going to stop right here and try and show you something like what caused these little divots. So you can see this area here a couple videos before where I pulled some fairing compound right here where this low area is on that vertical circle, just to the left of that. And this isn't the best footage of when I pulled it, but you can see as I'm pulling up, number one, I'm using that, that shorter knife right there, but as I, as I pull that putty up, there's not enough putty to cover the whole width of the blade kind of and so it gets really thin on that edge right there and it kind of starts checking or flaking or something like that and you'll see right there so that's the spot when we go back that'll be the spot on the left and then right here i'll show you uh number one i'm i'm kind of pulling in the trough that i'm trying to cover because i'm using this this shorter blade but right there it'll be the spot on the right as we go back so right here you can see those are the two spots that i'm having to deal with now going forward and that's why and cleaned it up and these may just be the edges and then kind of along the top right here i want to clean that up but uh and i'm not quite sure what's going to happen here like once i flip the boat back over and i go to finish the top side how all that's going to work out but you can see i mean this is another little see it's just a little bit of a gouge there and once again, I keep calling this a gouge, but all this is is where there was a nick of something as I was pulling that fairing compound from side to side. There was a nick or something in that putty, and it leaves that mark. Some of that stuff that was just so hard to see when the boat was multiple colors. By and large, this side of the boat looks it looks pretty pretty good. Some more stuff in here. I think we showed last this time. You know, fixing up this corner and that corner and all looks pretty good right there back up here at the bow you can see kind of on the rake here in the bow some of this paint hopefully you can see it that the paint kind of i didn't realize i was painting this side some of it was coming over here and by the time i come around to the other side it had already gotten firm so i couldn't 
lay it back down, but that should sand out pretty good. So I think what I just said before I mistakenly cut the camera off, so I'm gonna go ahead and guide coat the whole boat, which is just black powdery stuff here. It's a guide coat. I'm gonna go ahead and run it out. I'm gonna basically make the whole boat black. And then uh, that'll also make sure where we sand it. And uh, we're gonna come back. We're moving from 80 grit. We're gonna move up to 120 grit this time as we sand, because primarily this thing is pretty, pretty flat. So we're gonna work on it. So this guide coat is, like I said, it's a really, really fine powder. It's almost like, I don't know how to describe it, like charcoal dust or, you know, gr a really, really fine graphite or something. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it has like this little foam applicator pad there and, and you just kind of dust it, get some dust on it. I, I'm probably putting too much on it here just, just because, uh, I, I don't know what, the, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but you just, and it goes a long ways and you just put it on there and spread it out. And it's pretty easy to put on as you can see here. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. This guide coat is a very humbling experience i don't know if you can see like down through here man you can see everything i can't imagine what it's going to look like after i sand it you know i was feeling pretty good maybe i still should which is pole um but man like just look at all the stuff in here holy smokes at the holes and the stuff man we're gonna be we're gonna be running fairing compound for a while i mean the transit like i was just showing you these little spots here but look at the lines and man it shows up everything but like a totally different beast like this but uh you saw me put it on went on pretty good i bet you didn't take me 10 minutes to do the whole boat so now let's see how long it takes to sand it all back Okay, I promise this won't be a whole nother video that's all sanding. There is there is a lot of sanding, but I wanted to show this just because, I, you know, I had never seen this this particular process. The guy could obviously have never done it, I've never seen it before. Uh, I watched Andy with Boatworks, but he was using an oscillating sander or an, a random orbital sander. And so just kind of want to let this run a little bit, uh, you know, and just so you can see the difference and see how it comes off and essentially what I wound up doing is for me because I'm I'm so tall the working working low like this is really hard on me um, so I try and do the hardest part first uh, so that's why I go around the bottoms first and then I come up and do the top because it's easier for me to stand up and do it um, and this is like the most taxing so anyway that's why I always start with the bottom when I'm sanding um, so as you can see, I go down this one side and then I change paper a couple times. So I don't show you a lot of my resting in here. It's once again, it's, it's hot. It's, you know, it's over 90 degrees and I don't know, 300% humidity or something. But I, you know, I do take breaks like this and I just, I'm just kind of, I'm going to leave some of those in there so you can get an idea of how much exertion it is just, just for people to understand. But you can see as you sand this stuff off, what happens is as you, the, the, high areas uh, which are the all dark areas they get sanded back to the white coat and then anything that's a depression or low remains dark so yeah you can see the fat boy here at some point he's just got to go sit down i'm just kind of giving you a, an idea here of what the sequence is between sanding sessions and so basically i think i can sand with that respirator and all on for about a minute and a half, two minutes or something before I just can't breathe. And uh, I've talked about the process before of changing out that sandpaper. I, you know, this is adhesive back paper. 
So I pull the adhesive off, I wipe down the surface with uh, some denatured alcohol and I light that alcohol and let it burn off of that pad so that it's, it's clean and then the next paper sticks really well. That process has been working really, really well for me. You know, another thing that I've talked about before with this fairing and sanding and everything else is, well, when do you stop? So this transom, I think, gives you an idea of how, as I move from right to left, is, you know, is, is that enough? But what I do is I wind up coming back and, and I hit it one time and then I come back, change paper and kind of hit it again. And I try and sand it back, you know, really well till I start seeing those green pieces uh, showing through of the fairing compound. So it's, you know, it's a process I've never done before. I'm learning. Uh, I can tell you, knowing what I know now, I'm really impressed with this, uh, what happens. From the time I went to the Super Bill, things have really kind of taken off and I feel like it's really, really working in the right direction. Yeah, like that center keel there and some of that stuff in the middle of the boat. I just have to get up on the boat. It's just too hard to reach out there, you know. I would say it's over three and a half foot to the center line of the boat from the outside. So it's just too far to reach and sand and work and it's just too hard on me. And once again, fat boy's got to go sit down. I've got my little fan sitting on that lighter blowing through the the tent so you can see it all right a little update you can see the difference and i can tell you so far i'm a big fan of this super build and this uh guide coat now you can see like right here i thought i had a lot more major issues to deal with but like that'll certainly anything that's really dark like this stuff on the bow i'll probably try and skim that right there maybe a little bit right there but you know like this stuff there's a lot of stuff at the bottom and at the top but <clears throat> by and large man this guide coat it really shows you like here you can see along the bottom but like just this one area and i was there was a bunch of stuff in here i was worried about now i mean as you look back there it's not like there's just one or two but like i really feel like there's light at the end of the tunnel because dealing with these some of these like this one here Man, just another two coats of high build, probably going to take care of that. But it really just, you know, without a doubt, these are the problem areas. So, been at it all day, as you can see. I feel like I got this stern about this transom. It is really, really close. So, I mean, I knew I had these issues here, but it's not near as bad. You know, like this little area here, that little dark area there, you know anywhere that's dark but it's it's just minor minor stuff right here to be able to get it tight and this side you know felt like this uh, this is the side i started with but i kind of feel like this side here is a whole lot better um but about to shut it down for the day go inside get some rest and i mean you kind of see now my keel this pad it's got a little cattywampus to it it's on the bottom you never see it it probably still function fine um i wish that was perfect i don't I don't know how to fix it and I, I ain't really worried about it wish it was perfect but it ain't so we're gonna go with it just like it is news alert it's hot in south louisiana so fighting a little bit of the heat here but i'm gonna keep going so it's actually the next day i'll come back and now i'm gonna start working on the the uh the top side here and this is this is really all i have left to sand this back and once again um, part of what I fight, and, and I hope I'm describing it, is knowing when to stop. Um, like I said, I work, I work here from the transom to the bow on each side, then I go back over it one more time. And even as I'm sanding, I mean, you can see, I hope you can see, that, I mean, it's making a ton of dust. And, and I actually have to come in here and vacuum a couple of times because of the amount of dust. It's just moving it around. It gets in my eyes and whatnot. Uh, but I'm wearing that respirator uh, to keep the dust. And man, I can tell you, I've, I really felt the difference. Like I don't have any ill effects of dealing, being around all this dust. So if anybody's doing this, make sure you're wearing a respirator uh, and get a good one. I mean, this is an N95, I don't know, deluxe, I don't know, compliant. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty decent one and it's got these little cotton uh, filters that also go on the outside. So I change those out pretty regular as well. You can see here, like I just have to come back and vacuum. And it's ironic, you can vacuum over that, that, that guide coat, even though it's like a powder, and it still just kind of sticks in there. So uh, I don't think it hurts me that much at all. 
but once again I'm just I've already come down this side and now I'm gonna go back and you see everything will get much wider and it's it's getting smooth smooth there's just a few little as you run your hand on it a couple little places where you can feel some difference and uh, you know we're gonna follow this up with some fairing and I'm you know uh, this fairing stuff I'm very nervous about because I feel like I've screwed this this pro this boat process up I've made it ten times harder than I think it should have been if I if I was to go back and do it again, I bet you I could do it in a tenth of the time. But as hot as it is, I'm actually wearing that long sleeve shirt because that dust and all gets, you know, when you're sweating, the dust gets on you and it turns to like a cake. So you, I feel like it's actually better for me like this because it keeps the dust off of me. That's that's why I'm wearing a long sleeve here where I'm really fighting uh, this really, really dusty stuff. So gonna run through this sand in here pretty fast and then we'll uh, give you another update coming up So here, you see I've got another piece of that 120 grit sandpaper and all I'm doing is I'm keeping my hands on the hull and working it back and forth, trying to just get me a nice radius in there and trying to make sure that it's all smooth. And uh, it's work it seems to be working okay. I'm a little apprehensive about how it's going to finish up, but we'll see. Here we go. I guess I'll give a little update. As you saw I just finished finished up on all the sanding. And uh, this guide coat, it's a little bit different. You know, let me give you an example, give you some summary. Like here, you see the green stuff. That's the fairing compound. So you can see that right here, the guide coat's over on top of the fairing compound. And then the black is actually, I'm sorry, this is the uh, high build primer. And the black is actually the remnants of the guide coat to show you that there's an issue right here. Make sure that's focusing up there. So like right here, you can see that this is, is white and it's, it's super flat and super smooth. And then anywhere you see these little black dots, that's where like this is a little depression. It's, I wish I could, I'm gonna try, see if it'll focus. But you can see that this is a depress like th that's very rough. Like you can almost see the orange peel of where the high build went on, you know. And then there are other issues like this is a little bit of a crack. I kind of probably shouldn't have vacuumed, but I, I can still see now that I've seen the, the process. It doesn't show as good to everyone else, but I can still see it clearly. But like so, right in here, this low spot where this ridge is, I'm gonna have to pull a little bit of fairing compound in there. There, so. I've shown this little, like I showed this portion here before I sanded it back. And, you know, by and large, when I was talking about how humbling that guide coat was, it's, it's still pretty humbling because of the issues. But, like, this isn't near as bad. I really feel like if I come in here and put in a really, really thin, if I can really use and span this and pull in a really 
you know, a really, really thin piece of fairing compound in there. By the time I come back with another layer of high build, it should clean all that up and make it smooth. So it's kind of like this whole, you know, especially where you can see in here, multicolors. That's, you know, that's, that's a, when you're trying to make this thing wholly smooth from and fair, um, these colors just show where I had some major issues. Now the, the, the plan at this point would be that once I, once I fill this with fairing, so it's gonna go back to green, I'm gonna sand that back flush to all of this. Uh, and now that I'm using 120, I'm not uh, 120 grit sandpaper, I'm not cutting as much. So it should just smooth all this back to get to where here, when I come back with the high build, put another layer of that on, then put another layer of guide coat, sand that back, hopefully, you know, we, we have a lot less dark issues when all that's done. But, you know, so basically, yeah, this is kind of a better view, kind of walking through here. You know, I'm still, all the work I've done on these chines, um, there's still some low areas, which is kind of, kind of goes with what I could see when I looked down them. I could see that they kind of had, I'm exaggerating, but they had some waviness to them. But like this, uh, so, I don't know that that shows it, but but the the guide coat shows me where those low areas are. So when I pull the put, when I pull this fairing compound in there, it should be really good. But like this, this angle here, like this arc that comes down and goes around, it looks just as to the eye, it looks just as fair as it could be. So, and I showed this also. You know, I knew that this was an area, and I'd use this where I could see it was ripple. But now. The high points of this high build, like here, here, all of these white pieces are high, or highs. They're not too high. They're actually the the left, that would be flush and fair. So I'm hoping when I pull this compound, there's enough of that to keep me to keep me flat. And uh, I'm uh, heard heard a, heard a word that describes a lot of this process, and that's trepidation. And it's, you know, it's like I, I'm really, really nervous to start this because I feel like I've screwed this thing up. I mean, when I put that notch trial and all, I screwed it up. So hoping that going back through here, I'm just kind of walking around, you know, looking at the transom I'm talking, but I'm hoping that I keep the ball moving forward. The high build really felt like it, it jumped me forward a good bit. But, you know, there's there's a lot of dark spots. There's a lot of dark spots, a lot of stuff to deal with. So there's going to be a lot of fairing compound, you know, shouldn't be a lot because it's going to be, I mean, paper thin in many places. Like, so for example, this, this right here, I mean, I can see it, you know, high build may fit that uh, next layer of high build may fill that up. And that's where my trepidation comes from is do I just put a high build in here or do I go ahead and try and pull some putty? But I'm gonna probably go ahead and pull some putty um, because it's. I think I have enough reference in here that I can pull it and and it be okay without. <clears throat> like right here, I wor I'm worried that when I pull this little patch in here, you can see how I've sanded back to it. So that was obviously a really, really high point. Now is that high and making all this other stuff low? I, I would think so, but I've, I've sanded in here at so many different angles and all. So I'm, I'm hoping that this is really just a low area. And once I pull a little, a little super thin layer of fairing compound, it's gonna fill all those little, fill all these spots up. And this is gonna be, um, when we come back, it'll be, it'll be good. Okay, here's another issue is I'm gonna show you a diagram, you know, up here, or over here somewhere of the plans where this is where the sheer bumper will come in, the rub rail, whatever. You know, so it'll, it'll actually be a couple of blocks of timber, of, of, of wood that goes in here, glass and all this stuff. But, so I'm a little curious of how I'm gonna finish it from here up. So if I paint the sides and then I have to do a bunch of work down here, am I gonna screw up all this paint? So I'm trying to contemplate that right now. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna try and get this thing as fair as I can. I'm gonna give this, this bottom side one more go round and then I'm gonna probably, you know, pause on it. And I think what I'm gonna do is, as I get ready to finish painting all this, is when I go to top coat, I may only do, I may only come across here and do one roller 
along, you know, from this is the whole bottom and this is the whole side. I may only put one roller wide here, to finish this, once I flip the boat back over, finish this rub rail and all that, and then come back and paint. I'm gonna have it all prepped and all ready to go, finish primer and everything, so that I can mesh these two together down here and then just top coat it. But that's, you know, looking down the road, that's another thing, but I'm gonna face that one. Right